We don't hit home runs on this pod. We work station to station. Recording date is January 30th, and I'm back with my battery mate, as always, Dustin. And we are talking Jay's signings, I think, <laughs> and DHs. Uh, Dustin, um, let's get right into this. Uh, can you give me uh, your thoughts on today's announcement that Justin Turner is going to be a Toronto Blue Jay in 2024? Well, if I'm honest, you know, the first reaction was that uh, it was a little bit meh, not the signing that I was hoped for in J.D. Martinez or Jorge Soler, but, uh, you know, the more I thought about it, the more I, you know, dug into his stats, uh, read some Red Sox Twitter, listened to some podcasts, that kind of thing. Uh, I've been warming up to the guy. He seems like uh, a good leader, uh, you know, veteran presence, obviously. Um you know, he knows how to win. He's been on, you know, some Dodgers teams that have, have gone all the way. He's an MVP, you know, so a lot of good sort of peripheral, um, you know, parts of his game. And, you know, on the field, he had 92 RBIs last season. I think he, I saw he was like uh, 340 or 330, somewhere on there with runners in scoring position. And as we talked a lot about last year, you know, that's a stat that the Blue Jays need to improve on. So, you know, hey, it, it's a good piece. Um, I just hope that they're not done with this one. Well, I, I'm going to give my thoughts on the signing in a moment. But I just want to, I guess, go over some basics here. So Justin Turner uh, is a Toronto Blue Jays, as I said, for the 2024 season. Uh, he signed a one-year $13 million deal, which I thought was interesting. He, I think he's actually making more money this year than last year. And Justin Turner is 39 years old, Dustin. That's right. And not only is he making more money this year than last year, I think by um, opting out of his deal with the Red Sox last year, I think he signed his original deal was a two-year, like one-year deal with a an option. And if he opts out, he gets six million. So he's getting six million from the Red Sox, plus like the 13 million from the Jays. So he's making 19 million. Not too bad. But uh, yeah, 39, I mean, that's not too too far away from our own ages. Um, so he's definitely um, up there when it comes to uh, MLB players. But uh, hey, there's something to be said for experience, I guess. Well, he's definitely an experienced player. And, and I do agree with you in terms of like what he brings to the table. Experienced player, you know, can play uh, first base, third base, uh, obviously can DH. Um, he, uh, last year, 2023 stats for someone who was 38, 23 home runs, 276 batting average and 96 RBIs. And his wins above replacement was 2.1 OPS of 800 OPS plus of 114 on base percentage, 363 and slugging 465. So, uh, I think my biggest issue, you know, and, 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 Really, at this point, I think I'm willing to take anything in terms of Jay's signings, but it just seems like out of all of the um, DH and in turn options for um, a bat, I I just feel like he was kind of lowest on my list and not because of what he brings to the table, just more because of his age and, you know, I, I, I don't know, is, is he going to be able to replicate a season like last year? Uh Maybe he is. Maybe, you know, maybe he's, you know, maybe he's drinking the the Tom Brady wonder juice and he's going to play till he's, you know, almost his mid 40s. But yeah, I, I, I definitely felt a little underwhelmed, underwhelmed when I got the signing this year. And, but I, I don't think that's individually with Justin Turner. I think it's just really the whole Jays offseason and, and not even, you know, o, you know, Otani aside, but it seems like the Jays have kind of done everything backwards this season, Dustin. Like, am I, am I off base on that? Yeah, I was re-listening to last episode, and I think we talked about this too, is that, you know, the, the, the signing of Isaiah kind of falefa and Kevin Kiermeyer kind of felt more like the kind of signing you do around this time towards the, the start of spring training when, you know, you're just trying to fill in those pieces. They signed those guys first, and now they're trying to, like, find this big... Um, bat in the middle of the owner is Justin Turner that big bat I don't know I mean you're right there's a possibility that he might you know turn into a pumpkin this might be the year that he you know just 
kind of falls flat on his face and decides to retire at the end of the season, something like that. I mean, I hope not. I mean, you know, but you're right. I think we've done things a little bit weird, but the whole uh, the whole MLB kind of off season itself has been that way. I mean, look at the the second biggest bat that was out there in Cody Bellinger is still out there. Um, and the Blue Jays aren't, you know, out of the race for him either. You, I think you are correct in that some of this is not, um, is some of this is not the responsibility of, of the, you know, Jays front office. Um, I, I think I was listening to an episode of foul territory maybe a couple weeks ago. And basically the point was made like, unless you're really the Dodgers and I'd maybe throw the Yankees in, like, has anyone really had a great, you know, off season? And, you know, I, I do think some other teams have kind of done some, some other minor things. Um, it just seems like, I don't know. I just don't, don't, don't think the Jays are in this, you know, like I, I, the Jays seem to be relying on the, or, or, or hoping to rely on the fact of this quote unquote, you know, I, I've seen this positive regression, which like, I don't think is actually a thing, by the way. Um, I'm pretty sure positive regression is just progression. I think that's <laughs> what that is. But um, they seem to be relying on internal, like, okay, we're going to get better internally. And like, this was, you know, this was barely a playoff team last year. Right. I, so I, as far as I understand, positive regression refers to like, regressing to the mean so if you have something that this is your mean sort of uh performance this is what you we expect in the middle sometimes you're low sometimes you're high you know as we talk about this the floor and the ceiling regression you you over long periods of times you tend to regress to that mean to that average and so if you have a down year like let's say vladdy or kirk had last year you know, the tendency or the expectation is that they would regress to up to the mean positive regression. So I get what you're saying, <laughs> but it's it's more like it's describing somebody who's underperforming what they expect to be performing at. So it's just regressing to the mean. We don't need to throw in like, you know, positive in there as well. Like we know, we already know what this term is, but um but just just to touch on the Jays doing things backwards, you know they went out and they signed Kevin Kiermeyer over the uh, the Christmas break, and I don't I don't know if you listened to his interview with Mike Wilner on the Deep Left Field podcast, but you know he wasn't exactly a hot commodity and he admitted this, and so you know I, I I'm I'm struggling to understand why like the rush to do that, like, you know, now apparently IKF did have some significant interest from a lot of teams. And I think that's, you know, I, I don't think we need to explain why, like he just, he just kind of fits in in a lot of places and solves a lot of problems for teams. And it looks like along with the Jays latest signing, he probably is going to solve the third base, uh, you know, whole or problem. And, and with that, you know, Dustin, do you think that that means the end of Matt Chapman as a Toronto Blue Jay? I was thinking about this a little bit. I don't know. I I think that's it's still possible to get Matt Chapman. He would still fit. Justin Turner is more of a DH. IKF is like that um, utility guy. I don't know if we want uh, IKF playing every day at third base or even like 150, 140 games at third base. I think they want somebody there. Now you could say there's a platoon um, between him and then Biju against lefties, and then you know uh, Justin Turner can fit in there every once in a while. Um, but you know, I would hope. I you know, I think I still think if they are going to add a bat, it's going to be on the infield. It's going to be at third base. That I think. I said that last episode in terms of, you know, that's what I expected to happen between, you know, Christmas and now is that we try and find a third baseman. It's just, and a, and a DH, but Justin Turner kind of falls halfway there. I still think there's room for a third baseman, maybe even a second baseman, but my prediction is that they're going to try and do that, you know, 
uh, by trade at this point. I don't think we're uh, unless you sign Matt Chapman. Um, I I think it's got to be a trade. Well, the options are getting limited, you know, aside of re-signing Matt Chapman, and you know, I don't know how the fan base as a whole kind of thinks about that. I think there's a lot of people that even though Matt Chapman is, you know, the best third baseman available still of, you know, on the market. I think there's a lot of people that remember last season and don't remember his uh, offensive output very well. Um, He was, I think he was exactly, you know, when you talk about regressing to the mean, like I think his batting average was exactly his career average. I think it was 240 if I remember, but you know, he didn't have the power and he just generally seemed, you know, like that, I don't know, you talk about kind of the eye test. He generally just seemed like he wasn't, you know, like it, it just, something wasn't clicking and he was a bit lost at the plate. Um, you know, I think based on what kind of we've learned, I I, I don't know if that's the responsibility of Jay's um, hitting coaches. Like, you know, for all I know, we, we he could have his own private hitting instructor, which a lot of these, um, the stars do have. I think we kind of remember Matt Chapman being a little bit disappointing and striking out a lot. And that's what I remember. I mean, I, I posted in our group chat, like a comparison, a stat head baseball comparison between Matt Chapman and Justin Turner last year. And, you know, Justin Turner basically has, has him beat in almost every stat down the board, except for war. Right. And basically Matt Chapman has about 2.3 2.3 more war and that's probably a lot to do with his defensive abilities turner's you know hit 23 home runs versus matt chapman 17 96 rbi versus 54 rbi for matt chapman you know same stolen bases higher batting average you know higher obp all that you know it's so matt chapman was okay was good and especially really good on defense and that's where a lot of his war comes from but that's not what the Blue Jays need right now, especially in the infield. Uh, I was thinking about this, you know, in terms of like where we want, like where do we want to sacrifice defense? If we're going to have to sacrifice and trade like some defensive war in and <laughs> trade that for offensive war, which is kind of what I feel like the Blue Jays need to do, where would that come from? And I think the infield is a good kind of place where you can pull that out of because – if you think about it, like if you miss a ball in the infield and it gets to the outfield, then you know that's like a single. If you miss a ball in the outfield, then that's a triple. You know, ball is in the gap. Somebody scores from third, and it's a lot more damaging. So you want to kind of like shore up the outfield defense, or at least maintain the strong outfield defense that we've had, which you know they've done with KK and um, you know uh, Varsho and uh, Springer out there. But, you know, maybe sacrifice a little bit, you know, downgrade on defense with a Justin Turner or a Biggio at third. And then, you know, bring an IKF in the late game for defensive replacement and, you know, just try and get some more juice out of the bats there. I don't know if they've done that necessarily. I don't know. We'll see. But I feel like that's a reasonable kind of approach. If we talk about traditional power positions, right, a- Third base is a position that, you know, you want some offensive production from, and I think you want some slugging from, um, I, you know, and and is IKF going to offer that? No, he's not. Um, but, you know, I, I don't think, you know, if you're, if basically you're bringing in bats in other areas, um, whether it's the outfield or, or otherwise, I, uh, you know, I, I, I I don't think it would be the worst thing. It's kind of like a kind of lost leader. Like, yeah, you might be losing some offense, but if you were able to bring in a big bat, um, then you know maybe you know maybe that offsets that. Now, doesn't I don't know if we actually talked of so including Justin Turner. There's five. There's five DHs essentially available. Um, or they that that the Jays were considering. Now three three are off the market. One has been signed by the Jays. Um, which of Justin Turner, Jorge Soler, uh, J.D. Martinez, Reese Hawks, Hoskins, and Jock Peterson? Which 
like which of those players like you know if we had to go back say two weeks which which are you going with or what were your ideal um which would have been your ideal signings i'm kind of on the fence between jd martinez and jorge soler i've been leaning a little bit more towards jd martinez he seemed like just a stronger candidate from from that he's a little bit older that experience level kind of thing I think he had like a three war versus a solar 2.5 or something like that. So he just seemed like a little bit better of a candidate, but I, w- I could have been sold on either one of those. Those are the two that I was eyeing. Um, Reese Hoskins was a good, I think he signed, didn't he? I think he's gone now, but I, I, I think he was another one that was, you know, seemed like a good, you can get some value out of him. Yeah. Reese, Hi- uh, Reese Hoskins signed for the Brewers. Yeah. I don't think Justin Turner was on, on my radar really all that much at all to be honest well if i had to go through you know if i had to pick two you know i would have been like jock peterson had probably the worst 2023 of any of the players but he's a lefty hits uh hits the ball really hard i think essentially a platoon of him and justin turner would have been Pretty decent. Now, if I was to pick one of all those players, I would have. I, I I did say I wanted Reese Hoskins. Now he was injured for the entire 2023 uh, season, but he was, to my understanding, um, he was re- essentially ready to come back in the playoffs. It just the timing didn't work, and of course the the Phillies didn't make the World Series. I guess as they had hoped, and I think he would have been the player. I don't know if there was a match in terms of what he was looking for versus the Jays. Uh, it seems like he was looking for the uh, the Cody Bellinger pillow deal, you know, one plus one option, player option after one. And I don't know if that's what, the, maybe, you know, maybe maybe the Jays were looking for a commitment of, of a bit longer, but he's a Scott Boris client another one so he uh i guess he's looking for that big payday and hoping that he can have a big year with milwaukee i do feel like justin turner although you know as, as i said before what he brings to the table i like the you know the ability to play first and third uh dh obviously you know he kind of has a really well um uh, he's pretty well rounded offensively i think i probably would have wanted jorge soler or J.D. Martinez. J.D. Martinez probably um, a bit more than Soler. Apparently, Soler is looking for a three-year deal, and it seems like, based on what I've heard, is that teams want to give him maybe two, but they're a little leery of three. And and it, it seems like this off this off season, teams are definitely not throwing around money the way that I thought they maybe would, especially the way that the off season started with the Otani signing. Yeah, I, th- I think that that kind of frenzy at the beginning the the off season seemed to set some strange tone i don't know i mean we touched on it last episode i think there's a lot to do with that um that bankruptcy in the in the um in the tv rights uh deal that affected some of the players or some of the teams and they're maybe a little bit hesitant to make some big moves before they finalize you know what's going on with that and making sure that they they have that um, you know, solved. So, uh, and I don't even know if that's uh, completely solved or or what now. So, but that may have something to do with it. I don't know. It, it, I I think part of it also is just um, this kind of crop of off of um, free agents this year is a little bit flawed. You know, other than obviously Otani. Um, you know, everybody's got a little bit of a, a hole in their game somewhere. And uh, and maybe that's just, you know, teams a little bit hesitant or I, I don't know. It's hard. It's hard to say. Well, the free agent class definitely was not very deep in terms of position players. So, um, you know, when Cody Bellinger, I think he's a good center fielder, but, you know, it's not exactly like he's the top center fielder in the game. And uh, it seems like... Well, it seems like, you know, he, he hasn't signed yet, so I, I don't know if he's waiting on the Cubs um, or what, but, uh, you know, I imagine he'll he'll be in a Cubs uniform. I think Scott Boris is just probably waiting for them to get desperate or waiting for any team to get desperate. So if there is, you know, the Reese Hoskins 
you know, last day of spring training uh, injures his knee, then, you know, I'm sure Scott Boros will be on the phone to offer up his player and uh, Cody Bellinger's services. Yeah, I wouldn't put it past, you know, Scott Boris to hold his guy out until, you know, the last minute and maximize the dollars that he can get. I think he's also the agent of J.D. Martinez. Um, I don't know if he's Soler's agent or not. Um, I could check that. But, you know, either way, I think that's he might have something to do with, you know, why some of these guys, especially on the DH side of things, are not going uh, super quickly. Well, and I, I think what might be interesting is, of course, Justin Turner is a Blue Jay, and the Red Sox are heavily linked with Jorge Soler. So it seems like they might be doing a little bit of a swap, uh, Justin Turner for Jorge Soler. Both teams, of course, in the AL East, and see how um, see how that one works out. Jorge Soler is known to be quite streaky and kind of up and down. I think there's been some injuries in there as well, but... 2021 World Series MVP for the Atlanta Braves. Um, so, and what, 36 home runs last year? So I, I think, you know, he would have slotted very nicely into the middle of the order. But, um, you know, Shatkins picking up a versatile player uh, in, Ju- in Justin Turner doesn't, like, it just kind of suits them. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I think this, that's a very Atkins kind of uh deal for sure it's not surprising um he likes to be flexible he likes to have a lot of options you know you know uh, justin turner can play first base can play third he can dh he can spell you know vladdy he can move things guys around he's got we've got ikf now and a lot of guys already like biggio on the roster that can play all over and so there's a lot of i think we talked about this last year as well like the number of different lineups the Blue Jays could put together again this year is, is pretty wide. So I think that's the kind of team he likes to build. Well, I talked about this with Rob a little bit. You know, I, I one thing I I don't see as much in baseball is um is like like really pure depth. And so I'm wondering if that is kind of like the next iteration of how teams will play is that you know, like, like traditionally, it seems like, you know, you're starting nine gets, you know, most of the money. But, it, you know, if you're basically every game, you have a different lineup, um, you know, do, you know, do you get the most out of players when they're maybe a little bit more west rested and, you know, you're bringing guys in, maybe, you know, matchups late in the game, um, a little more depth on the roster as opposed to kind of like a really strong starting you know, starting nine, which, you know, if you read Twitter, it's always like, well, here's here's how the Jays, you know, batting lineup is is going to figure. And of course, that what that's not even half the team. <laughs> yeah. And that's going to yeah, that's going to be the lineup for maybe what, 80, 90 games, something like that, if they're healthy and and clicking and all that good stuff happens. Um, yeah, I think. I think you're you're onto something there a little bit. I think baseball is one of those games where, you know, there's you need contri- contributions from a lot of different guys, and the keeping people healthy or the load management or whatever, you know, it's not something that baseball really talks about a whole lot, but maybe they should, because that comes out of you know sports that are a lot more heavy on players. Um, you know, physical uh, health, but baseball is a, a pretty heavy, physically demanding sport in general, especially for the guys that play every day, like you know, Bo Bichette and stuff like that. So, you know, you you might be right. I think there's there's something to be said for building a deep team. You know, the Jays got lucky last year with their starting pitching, for example, in which they didn't have a whole lot of. Uh, injuries or or problems or they didn't need to throw out a lot of starters last year you know you can't expect that every year and we talked a lot about the the lack of depth that was on the team and starting pitching if if Gosman went down Bassett went down who do we have to replace them I think they shored that up a little bit this year um with a number of guys it looks like Manoa might be maybe looking to bounce back so 
um, hopefully, hopefully that's that's uh, hopefully you're right, and hopefully that the Blue Jays are on the cutting edge of that. Well, one player who definitely plays pretty much every game is Bo Bichette, and he actually mentioned in a recent interview he actually did drop uh, Justin Turner's name. So I wonder, wonder if he kind of knew something was maybe in the works. Um, Dustin, I wondered if you had heard that interview and and maybe your thoughts on it. Yeah, I did. I, I thought that was a good interview that was on the uh, the Blair and Barker podcast. I think that um, Bichette had some interesting things to say among the that particular point in which he was. I think he was just saying that you know he believes that the team is is good, but you know adding a guy like Justin Turner, who is a good, experienced kind of guy, and uh, I think he was also just talking about this is the time. Like we've learned enough. We've, uh, you know, there's been a lot of talk in the past about how we're young and we're we're learning and we need to, you know, you know, continually learn. But now is the time that the, the learning's done. Like you're here. It's time to get it done. And it's good to hear. I thought it was a pretty insightful point. That's something that I would probably have um, said myself. It's like there's no excuses we're the blue jays are actually one of the older teams in the league now i think we're like top five in the in age of the team on average so it's not like there's a lot of young guys that are just learning i know um uh what's his name Gr- uh, vladimir guerrero is is like pretty young but Everybody else, you know, has been around for a while, and even he has been in the t- in the league, you know, five what five years now. So uh, it's time to get it done. And I thought that was a great uh, point by Bo. Yeah, Bo Bichette seems to be able to communicate things in a very straightforward manner. Um, he doesn't really beat around the bush. Uh, kind of says it like it is, but he also doesn't, you know, he's not over the top about things either. Um, and I think he knows. He comes from a baseball family, so he knows his abilities um, when he steps up to the plate. And I uh, I think it's going to be interesting. To see. He, he basically talked about how he needs to prepare his body a bit better for the, you know, the rigors of 162 as he did get injured last year. And he, he felt that one of the things he could do is uh, essentially, you know, just prepare in the offseason better. And, you know, hopefully that injury, th- that injury hopefully doesn't happen. Um, and he can, you know, make it through to the end and, and, you know, take that stride towards, you know, 30 home runs, 330 average, 100 RBIs, which would be immense. Yeah. And I think he talked a lot about, you know, discipline, um, when he was making that point and just being more disciplined in the, in the off season or in the off the field activities, you know, taking care of his body, getting the treatments done, massages and cold therapies or whatever they do to, to, keep their body ready to play the next day um and i think there's something to be said for that you know maybe he was kind of uh reflecting on the fact that maybe he let that lapse a little bit and that's the reason why he got injured and so i respect the, you know that ability to sort of reflect on your mistakes even a guy like Bo, who you know i would argue is probably the best offensive player on the team last year um even he's sort of admitting to some, um, you know, holes or some gaps in, in his preparation and his, um, you know, daily activities, the things that he can control that he wants to correct for. Well, I also uh, took note that he basically said that his entire career, people have been telling him he can't, he's not a shortstop. So I, I thought that was interesting. And, um, it seems that, I, I think there was probably, you know, we, we we definitely did note, you know, prior to last year, because last year I think we I think we all agree he took a big step defensively. But pri- um, prior to last year, he was prone to some errors. And it seems like based on what he's saying is like, I think I think there's a there's a large mental part of his game probably that could use a little bit of improving because he basically says that, you know, the every play he makes every play in practice. And then when there is a game, you know, sometimes, you know, he wouldn't make those plays. And, you know, I think he was saying in the 2022 season, he made like four errors in the first week or something like that. And um, basically, you know, 
there's a challenge that's been thrown down for Bo, and it seems like he he's up for it. Yeah, absolutely. You know, not only on the field in, in terms of his defensive ability, but they also talked a lot about you know his leadership and you know how he's kind of take that on, taken that on, and he recognizes that he's a leader in that clubhouse and he needs to act like it. And um, it's it, I I got he didn't say this outright, but I sort of got the impression from him that he's kind of a quiet guy and and maybe like maybe not a natural leader in terms of like, he's not that kind of, you know, teacher kind of guy, but, you know, he recognizes, you know, that he needs to take that on. He needs to be better at that. And um, he seems to have been uh, doing that. I heard an interview with um, David Schneider on the Gate 14 podcast where, you know, he was talking about Boba Shed and how Bo would, talk to him about hitting and how Bo is really just like that kind of guy that will just kind of bounce ideas and talk to anybody, including somebody like David Schneider, who's just a rookie, right? Like talk to him about hitting because he loves hitting and he you know wants to be better and he wants not only to be better, but to encourage others to be better. So I thought that was really interesting and, um, and hopefully he can continue that this year and that kind of thing will rub off on others and also, I think that's part of the reason why Bobichet wanted, um, you know, he mentioned Justin Turner. Justin, if you, I don't know if you heard the Blair and Barker from today, I think that came out today, but in it, they talked to the Red Sox, um, one of the beat reporters and one of the guys that's a Red Sox um, a media personality. And that guy was just talking about how much of a leader that Justin Turner what was last year for the Red Sox. I mean, it was, it was his first year there, and he just, like, took over, and he was the guy. He was the leader in that clubhouse. And so I feel like maybe Bobochet knows that or felt that, you know, being in the AL East, they have to have some insight into what's going on on those other teams. And, you know, maybe I got kind of from the subtext of both those points is that, you know, maybe Bo feels like they need some kind of leadership in that clubhouse a little bit more, like a little bit more discipline and leadership, not only in himself, but in others. So hopefully that's something that uh, turns into results on the field. Well, I think Bo, you know, I think every, I think anyone can be a leader, right? I think, you know, people do it in different ways. And um, I think Bo probably is the type of guy to kind of lead by example. He definitely seems like a more quiet guy. He's, you know, he's definitely not, you know, Vladdy, right? Vladdy's, you know, his personality. And um, I think, you know, Vladdy probably can be a bit of the alpha dog in, in that, in that um, clubhouse. Uh, you know, I, I, I think someone bringing in someone like Justin Turner, you know, to hit behind Vladdy, probably will do him a lot of a lot of good as as well as all the other offseason work that he's done but to me Bo and Vladdy kind of seem like perfect foils for each other right you know you have the you know big full of personality um first baseman you know who can just launch home runs uh of course gold glove and then you have the you know more quiet uh you know leads by example, but is, is a really, really good hitter, uh, in Bo Bichette. And, and they seem to kind of be foils for each other. And, and I, I do think a lot of people probably thought that, you know, they would have at least won one playoff game by now. And, and I, I, you know, maybe bringing in some more leadership like, um, Justin Turner or, you know, whoever else they're bringing in, um, you know, will help kind of, you know, steady these guys a little bit. And um, I know Kevin Barker was talking about at one point about how Vladdy, he felt Vladdy need, Vladdy needs to be protected. And I'm going to call, I'm going to call into the back leg line and basically ask Barker like to expand on that. Like, is it, is it where Vladdy's at in his career? Is it the type of hitter Vladdy is or whatever? I, I imagine it's probably just kind of the juncture of his, where he's at right now. Um, in that, 
you know, he's a bit younger and, and sometimes, you know, sometimes you need a guy behind you, uh, you know, just give you a little more reassurance of what pitches you're going to see. And I can, I can tell you that on the, the show today, when they were discussing Turner, Barker was really high on Turner in terms of that particular aspect of being able to protect Vladdy. Um, you know, he played that role for the Red Sox, um, and he's the one, he's, you know, the reason why I know what he hit with runners in scoring positions because that's what Barker pointed out pretty uh, multiple times on the show today. Just that, you know, he's the run, he's a run producer. He just knows how to get done. You know, he's like his party up front or whatever he says with, about, you know, you know, the kind of guy that just likes to launch balls. And that's, and that's who Justin Turner is. And hopefully that's kind of a, a an ingredient that the Blue Jays need. Maybe not. They don't need the whole team to play like that, but they need somebody in that, you know, four or five spot behind Vladdy that can do that, that will make the pitchers, you know, kind of think twice about, um, you know, not giving Vladdy a pitch to hit, you know. Like in terms of Justin Turner, like his career OPS is 829 and his OPS plus for his career is 125. Like, so... Like this guy is consistently produced. Um, I'm just wondering when that candle is gonna blow out. You right. know what I mean? Like, well, right? And that's that's the concern I have. Um, I have a little bit, you know, even with JD Martinez, like he's 36. Like, there's got to be diminishing returns at some point there as well. Justin Turner seems to have, you know, made a good deal here, and and you know, I hope to be down at Rogers Center seeing him mash a few home runs because I think I think he's definitely capable of that. Yeah, hey, you know, he's got the red beard, so, you know, I like that. Maybe I'll grow it out long like him, and then I'll, I'll be able to dress up and, and be like, uh, you know, Justin Turner impersonator on the in the field. <laughs> I think you might have to hit the gym too, Dustin. Just like he's a, he seems like a big guy. Yeah, well, I'm on that, but, you know, it's going to be a while. Well, we uh, will await the uh, red beard photos throughout the season. Uh, Dustin, I think that's all the time we have. Uh, I guess we will be back if there are any future uh, signings before spring training. And then I think we're going to do – And we kind of did a, a hasty – season preview last year and i think uh i think we'll do like a good season preview this year once we have a pretty good idea of who's on this uh roster because i don't know i i they're like i'm hoping there's another bat coming <laughs> but too, um it, you I'm know like it's very something. possible there's not either I, yeah and a trade would be nice but the one thing that i i want to i want to just say before we go and I think fans get caught up with um like the fun over like 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 if they if the Jays did nothing and won the World Series, like that's that's what you want. Like who cares what they do in the offseason, right? Like of course you want them to approve, but I don't want them to sign players just to sign players, right? No. And this happens in a lot of other sports too, right? Like soccer, like summer transfers or people are just checking every day about like, you know, who's rumored to go where and all this. And same thing in baseball. I think, um, baseball, there's no real deadline though. So it's kind of this like wild West, um, very strange. Right. And, and I, I don't know, I don't know if I would be signing, like, I don't know if I, I, I think I would be drawing a line in the sand and saying after this date, we will not sign any players this season. Cause I, I just, you know, guys got to come to spring training, got to, you know, be a part of the team. Um, and, you know, I think like, like Kirk missed the spring spring training last year. And, you know, he was having a kid, understandable. But, um, you know, it, it, it took a while for him to get going. And uh, I think, you know, having guys with the team in spring training, you know, getting swings in, you know, all of the stuff that they should, I think is important. And, and, you know, if they had an opportunity to sign Cody Bellinger and it was like March 20th, I, I, I no thanks, you know, I, you know, and, and, and but by that, I mean, like sign him for the price that, you know, they were wanting. I just, I just don't know if I would do that. I think it would just upset, you know, the apple card and, 
you know, Scott Boris is, he's got one thing in mind. He's looking out for his client. He's not looking out for teams, but Ross Atkins and, and company have to do have to look out for that. Yeah. You don't want to overextend yourself just to, because you're panicked or because, you know, you, you feel like the fans are going to riot or something like that. I think the Blue Jays fans are going to come out. I feel like if they get it to the important part will be getting to a good start to get off to a good start. Guys like, you know, uh, Vladdy and Kirk and Varsho have, you know, reasonable starts. Maybe we see Manoa bounce back and with a good couple games and you know, the, the town gets excited and, you know, it'll be back. You know, people in Toronto, you know, when the team's good, will support it. I think a good start is absolutely crucial this season. Uh getting off to a bad start and you know we we all know what happened in may last year and they were basically playing you know catch up for the rest of the year because it was just such a bad month but they did have a good start last year and and you know they hit some um some rough waters so yeah i think a, a good start is crucial i think a good start is crucial for you know i think it's just like even off the field i think it's crucial this year because I, I believe I said in a past episode that if this team gets off to a really bad start, you know, Mark Shapiro is going to wish that he fired Ross Atkins because, you know, people, people are out for blood. Um, the one thing, you know, if this, if this season ends up in a good place, the one thing I think I will give these guys credit is not, you know, reaction signing, you know, Oh, we missed missed out on Shohei. Here's $250 million, Cody Bellinger, right? Like, I think, you know, we'll see where this leads. I know people are underwhelmed by the signing so far, but there's still some time. And, you know, it's not like, I don't know, it's not like this team doesn't have good players on it. It has it has lots of talent. It just has to be um, all pulling in the right direction and, uh, you know, performing as they should. Let's uh, cross our fingers. I, I, I feel, I believe, I believe. You know me, I'm the optimist. So can't wait for spring training. All right. Well, I think we will wrap it up there, Dustin. Thanks again for joining me, and uh, hopefully, we're talking again soon. Mm-hmm.